In this lesson, we're going to continue to talk about chirality, but now we're going to look at it in ring structures. The key thing to remember that in ring structures, we have to look at our groups a little differently. One of our groups will be going in the clockwise direction, and the other group will be going in the counterclockwise direction. Let's look at an example. The hydrogen atoms have already been added to this molecule, so we don't need to add them ourselves. When I look at carbons 2 through 6, I see that each of those carbon atoms has two hydrogens, which means it cannot have four unique groups, so I don't need to look at any of those to determine whether or not they are chiral. The carbon I need to look at is carbon 1. Let's determine what our groups are for carbon 1. We have a CH3 group, an OH group for group number 2, Group number three is going in the counterclockwise direction around the ring, and group number four is going in the clockwise direction around the ring. Now what we're going to do is we're going to trace our way around the ring, starting from carbon one, and we're going to go to carbons two and six to compare. So imagine that you're tracing your fingers around the molecule. The orange represents your left hand, the green represents your right hand. We started with carbon one and the first atoms in our groups going in the clockwise and counterclockwise direction are carbon two and six respectively. When I look at these two carbons, they are both CH2, so they are exactly the same, so there is no difference between them. I move on to carbons three and five, working my way around the molecule and I see that carbon 3 and 5 are also identical. They're both CH2. I can then go to carbon 4. In this case, we're pointing both hands at the same atom because that's where we ended up as we went in the clockwise and counterclockwise direction. So since it's the same atom, it's most definitely the same. Next, I'm going to keep moving around. So now I've gone to carbon three and carbon five. My right hand, which is the orange, is moving around counterclockwise. The green hand, which represents my left hand, is moving clockwise. And I see that three and five are the same. I move to two and six and see that they are still the same. And I get all the way back to carbon one. And in going both the clockwise and the counterclockwise direction, I never saw anything different between the two groups. So even though the clockwise and the counterclockwise direction ultimately connect, I treat those as two different groups in opposite directions. If I can go all the way around the ring in either direction and I don't see anything different, that tells me that the clockwise and counterclockwise groups are exactly the same. And as a result, this is an achiral carbon and an achiral molecule because groups three and four are not unique. Let's look at another example. We also have our hydrogens drawn in on this molecule. When we look at carbons two, three, four and six, we can eliminate those as possibilities for being chiral because they have two hydrogens each. We're going to look at more in depth at carbon one and we're going to start by going around and determining what groups are attached to carbon one. Group number one is CH3. Group number two is OH. Group number three is the counterclockwise direction, and group number four is the clockwise direction. Now we need to repeat the procedure we did on the previous example by going around the molecule and seeing if we run into anything different or if we get back to the starting point and see exactly the same thing all the way around the ring. We're going to start with carbons two and six because they're immediately next to carbon one, which is the atom that we are looking at to see if it is chiral. I see that carbon two and carbon six are the same. And so I'm going to go to the next atom, which is carbon three in the counterclockwise direction and carbon five in the clockwise direction. And at this point, I see something different. 
Carbon 3 is CH2. Carbon 5 is a carbon with an OH and a Cl attached. Therefore, our counterclockwise group and our clockwise group are different from one another and therefore groups 3 and 4 are different, so we have four unique groups attached to carbon 1, making this a chiral carbon atom as well as a chiral compound. Carbon number 5 would also be considered a chiral carbon because as we trace around in a clockwise and counterclockwise direction, we see that the groups are different as well. Let's look at two molecules. We've already looked at molecule A in a previous example, and we want to compare that to molecule B. Molecule A was chiral because carbons 1 and 5 were chiral carbons, which makes it a chiral compound. When I look at molecule B, when I trace it around, I'm going to find that carbon 1 is now considered achiral because we don't see anything different as we did in molecule A. 5 is now an achiral carbon because it has two hydrogens attached. Carbon 4 is a possibility for being chiral because it no longer has two hydrogen atoms attached. However, if I trace in the clockwise and counterclockwise direction, I will find that the group is the same in both directions. And the importance of this is, is looking at molecule in A and B, they are very similar, but where the groups are attached makes a difference. So instead of having substituent groups on carbon 5, having them on carbon 4 changes the molecule from a chiral compound to an achiral compound. Is cyclopentane chiral? First, we're going to add in our hydrogens. And what we see is that every carbon has two hydrogens attached. Regardless of what other groups are connected to that carbon, none of these carbons can be considered chiral because they do not have four unique groups because two of their groups are hydrogen. So cyclopentane is achiral. Identify the one chiral carbon in the molecule. First, we'll draw in our hydrogens. We will eliminate any carbons that have two or more hydrogens attached. We can eliminate carbons 2, 3, as well as the substituent group because they all have two or more hydrogens attached. Next, we can eliminate carbons 4 and 5 because it's involved in the double bond and because there are only three groups attached to that carbon, it cannot have four unique groups. The only carbon we have left is carbon 1, and we see that we have a CH3 group, an H group, we have the counterclockwise direction, and we have the clockwise direction. As we go to carbon 2 and 5 to work our way around the clockwise and counterclockwise ring, we see that we come to a carbon on carbon 2, which is CH2, whereas carbon 5 is CH. We see something different, therefore carbon 1 is chiral.